let's just do honor to our nation. We'll sing the national anthem, and then he will present his address. Hilton, do we have national anthem? We can sing. Arise, O compatriots, Nigeria's call, obey, to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, you may be seated, please. Before you here are members of the press, both national and members of a global uh, television and press network. You may now. Okay. Your Excellency, we have in the hall members of the press, both national media houses as well as international networks they are here to listen to you this morning and ladies and gentlemen just before i uh, call his excellency to address you let me also make an announcement that uh, when he is through there is also another announcement coming from the house, just to let you know, so you don't rush out. Your Excellency, over to you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, whom I have tried to now refer as our media force, uh, my leaders from Labour Party, Invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On Saturday, 25th of February, 2023, by the special grace of Almighty Allah, Nigerians will be expected to make probably the most important decision in the history of the country. A decision that will determine and shape the future of Nigeria. The past eight years have witnessed the most lamentable failures in terms of promises made for change. The same people, though now in different camps, have renewed the same promises made in 2015 which none has been fulfilled or delivered. Even the uh, simplest one, the provision of bursaries and scholarships for students promised in 2015, repeated in 2019, yet to be achieved, is being promised again among others in 2023. We must not forget that Nigeria faces existential threats because of poor leadership and irresponsible governance. The good news is the arrival of Labour Party and its most admired, remarkable, inspirational leader, His Excellency Peter Obi, who has changed the dynamics of Nigerian politics for good. He has mobilized Nigerians and given them hope that a new Nigeria devoid of bad leadership, insecurity, and corruption is possible. 
also possible is a country propelled by good governance to significantly improve the general well-being of the vast majority of Nigerians and guarantee their security and prosperity. It is a message we have taken around the country and has been well received by millions of Nigerians who have come to believe in him of his own good antecedents. Throughout our campaigns, we have met some of the most amazing, enthusiastic, and wonderful Nigerians, particularly the youth and women, who through their actions and commitments have convinced me of the need for an honest and dedicated leadership. These Nigerians, the obedience, who have shown courage and desire to take back their country, they have they care very little about religion and ethnicity, and more about a country that is inclusive, united, and a country that works for all. You have you only have to be at the rallies and town hall meetings to appreciate the outpouring of love, support, and encouragement to His Excellency Peter Obi and my humble self. We thank every Nigerian most sincerely. Our supporters have invested time, energy, and emotions because they can see our sincerity and commitment. This is what makes us different from the others. We have asked Nigerians to hold us responsible if we fail as promised to secure, unite, and prosper our dear nation, Nigeria. We have asked them to hold us responsible if we fail to move Nigeria from consumption to production. We have asked them to hold us accountable if we fail to build a 21st century economy propelled by technology, and if we fail to transform the vast arable land in Nigeria, especially northern Nigeria, into the new oil. We will bear the full responsibility if we fail to build the required human capital and skill for the 21st century economy that we live in. Hold us responsible if we fail to cut waste in government and drastically fight corruption, which has permeated every segment and sector of our national life. We make these promises because of what we are offering Nigerians. Leadership with character, competence, knowledge, and compassion. This is the stark difference between us and others, and why we call on all Nigerians to troop out on Saturday, 25th February 2023, and vote for Labour Party. A vote for Labour Party is a vote to secure, for a secure and progressive nation. It is a vote for unity and an appreciation that our diversity is a major strength which we must promote to our advantage. I know that His Excellency, Peter Obi, will before the close of campaigns speak to the nation. But today I call on all Nigerians of goodwill, Nigerians who care about the youth to come out and mass and vote Labour Party. Even if you are angry with the country and the leadership because of the sufferings you are going through, Please take your anger to the poll and vote out those who, over the years, have impoverished you through bad governance. Our message is very simple and unambiguous. Against the threats and challenges facing us, we offer Nigerians a leadership with character we know, with proper records of competence we can trust, knowledge and compassion you can feel, 
and capacity that has been tested and proven, a leadership you can hold accountable. Let me reiterate, we shall stop the killings and start the healing. We shall stop the stealing and start the keeping. We shall stop the slide and start the climb of our society. Vote for Labour Party for a new Nigeria. The 2023 elections, if conducted well, hold the promise of the long-awaited, secure, stable, and prosperous Nigeria. Nigeria is indeed only one good leader away from greatness. I therefore sustain the call on INEC to be an impartial umpire and not frustrate the will of the people. I implore security agencies, the police, the military, the DSS, and other uniformed officers to conduct themselves with utmost responsibility and resist the temptation to subvert the will of the people. And to my dear Nigerians, with us, you have the best opportunity to take back your country and usher in a new Nigeria. I urge you to troop out, vote Labour Party, LP, and protect your right to a new Nigeria. Let's get it done, please. Vote Peter Abi for president. Vote Labour Party. LP, Mama, Papa, Peking. God bless Federal Republic of Nigeria. Excellency for the address. My name is uh, Mazito Chuko, is okay, Lady Media. My question to you, sir. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria yesterday made a broadcast where he reaffirmed that the 500 Naira notes and the 1,000 Naira notes. Um, it will still remain out of circulation and out of use. And yesterday we also saw... Should anybody attempt this kind of gross act of indiscipline under our leadership, the full weight of the law will bear down on that individual. <laughs> we have been more than bewildered at the failures we have witnessed in the last eight years. Um, however, it is close to an act of treason. So to say, it's an act of treason. If um, an elected governor of a constituent part of a sovereign country will give direct instructions to the contrary of what is constitutionally the exclusive preserve of the federal government. Like it or hate it, Buhari's government was duly elected and sworn in. Uh, Nigeria is a sovereign state. And currency matters are a sovereign issue. No state governor, especially those who have serially failed in implementing 
court judgments in their political career has the right to challenge the government. However, they know themselves better. They know how they came to power. They know how, they, how much they collected from each other and what transpired way back 20, 13, 14, 15. Why a commander in chief cannot descend, irrespective of the immunity of a state governor, why he cannot descend? While as commander in chief, you give out executive order, clean constitutional, and a state governor goes to say that people should continue to exchange those currencies. This is to say that there are two authorities in your country. Why President Buhari is silent about this is best known to them. And immunity does not mean that the offense has not been committed. This is a treasonable offense. Why Bahari is keeping quiet and letting this pass, we don't know. They know each other better. These are the state governments that contributed about the largest votes to bring Buhari, Buhari's government. Kanu, Kaduna, uh, of course there is Katsina, but we haven't heard from Katsina yet. But now these are the states at the forefront of fighting Buhari's government because of currency. These are state governments who have not fought Buhari's government for failure to deliver the promise to secure Nigerians. Their states have become so insecure. The train from Kaduna to Abuja was attacked. International headlines. They have not challenged Buhari on that. They have not challenged Buhari on when the Naira fell from 200 to the dollar to 750 now or more. They have not challenged him. It is only the money, the drama to elections that they are challenging the president to the extent of giving counter orders to the tune of um, you know, treason. It's close to treason. Uh, lawyers will tell you that better. Next question, please. Right. Um, my personal experiences will not fail to bear here. Um, I have in the past suffered a variety of frauds perpetrated against me, 2007, 2011, and 12. Uh, for that, I happen to know INEC deeply. Um, I have also been a keen observer in 2015 and particularly 2019. Uh, your question about how confident I am. I am cautiously optimistic, and so should all Nigerians. Until we see free, fair, credible elections, we won't believe it. Let them do, and then we believe. Um, as for the affirmative action, His Excellency Peter Albi has released a statement this morning and we are on the same page. So please allow me to wholeheartedly adopt the statement of His Excellency Peter Albi. <laughs> Next question, please. Good morning, Chief. Good afternoon. My name is Kingsley of the Daily Independent Newspaper. I will ask you just two simple questions. Question number one is, the Supreme Court has asked to take action on the currency swap bill. And the, the President came out yesterday to make categorical remarks regarding the currency swap thing. Now, in some quarters it has been, the president has been accused of uh, contempt of court. I want 
to know your position on that. Then number two, you have your your rally in Lagos. Now there are people who believe that the resident electoral commissioner for Lagos ought to be recalled or deployed elsewhere, and they have their reasons for that. Some is, some reasons are bordering on uh, some unscrupulous remarks he's been making, and the fact that they don't have confidence that non-Lagosians will be allowed to vote in Lagos. I want your position on that also. Apparently, I may only be able to adequately answer your question on the Supreme Court. Um, it was very strange that the Attorney General of the Federation allowed Mr. President to proceed with yesterday's uh, national broadcast. And to say the least, it was unfortunate. The least I know is that when a competent court of law, for that matter, Supreme Court, is addressing an issue, all parties stay action until such is delivered. How much more of the President Commander-in-Chief, aided with all the instruments of government, for that matter, the office of the AGF. However, I have always submitted, even in the second paragraph here, yeah, we have been more than bewildered by the poor quality of leadership in Nigeria. That is the only thing that, that can explain this phenomenon, that Supreme Court has even adjourned hearing, or maybe preserved ruling, and a commander-in-chief goes out to take another action on what is at the Supreme Court. This is classic poor quality leadership. It's a standard hallmark of what we've been witnessing. However, we have weeks to go, now days to the election, and maybe a few months. We are now challenging the offshoot of this governance, of this uh, government. Our opponents are the candidates of APC and PDP and any other party that happens to be around. Right now, the best we can get out of this government is some form of a credible election for us to ease them out and usher in the Nigeria of our dreams. That is the only way to explain what happened. Um, it was a tragedy, it was a travesty, uh, but thanks to very keen observers like your good self, you would feel that something is wrong and then ask the question. But in my measured response, to you. I think it was unfortunate that Mr. President took action on what the Supreme Court is about to rule on. Uh, as for Lagos, I don't know much about that. I'm sorry about that. And I don't want to speculate. No, I've, I've answered that. It's a follow-up question to what a colleague from uh, the Sun newspaper asked, where she said that uh, how confident are you in the Independent National Electoral Commission conducting a free, fair, and credible election. And you said um, you don't expect uh, anything uh, that falls short, maybe to your side. How, you sound very confident. What if the result goes the other way? What are you going to do? Yes, um, I'm confident because the situation we're in now, really, is not only logical, it is arithmetic not even to say mathematical. Look at it this way. 18 political parties have filed presidential candidates. 15 could not actually go around the country to campaign. So we can comfortably say that 15 have fallen behind. There are three main parties now contesting 2023 presidential elections. Out of the three, two have misconfigured themselves to win 2023 presidential elections. One of them, helplessly so, it leaves only one party standing. And I repeat, this is logical. Now, let me get political. 
the reason why Bola Chinimbo is not vice president of Nigeria today is the impracticality of a certain kind of ticket in 2015. Nigeria has waxed stronger in terms of unity. For the well-meaning Nigerians, not for those who are dividing Nigerians, what could not happen in 2015 cannot happen in 2023. They have made a fundamental error and they will pay by losing this election. The second thing is that the second opponent of ours was categorical in 2015 that the reason why PDP then had to be defeated was that it was the turn of the North. It cannot therefore be the turn of the North again. Very quickly, I have always said it, that our name registered in the United Nations is Federal Republic. Both our faiths, we know that the Creator makes no mistake. There are countries you have nearly 100% one faith, one ethnic group, one language, and the Creator makes no mistake. Here we have 250 and two competing uh, religions, and we must lead with each other and do justice to each other. Any responsible organization that calls itself a political party, for that matter presenting a presidential candidate, must respect the diversity of Nigeria. Then add that to the political history of Nigeria, you must configure yourself. After uh, independence, six years we ran into trouble. By the ninth year, we began to recover. We did not find our democratic direction until 20, until 1979. Look at it, start counting. One, then General Olushigo Obasanjo, even though it was vote for vote, there was Zig Dao's Aolo War, Northern Muslim Shil Shagari War. Then, years later, military took over for 15 years. But in between, a Northern Muslim Ibrahim Babangida because he really knew the ins and outs and the rights and wrongs of Nigeria, handed over to Christian Southern Ines Shonikon. Abacha took Abdul Salam came, going in 1999, then Fourth Republic. Uh, handed, there was election, all the same. Northerners were there, Muslims were there. Handed over to then Chief Olushegun Obasujo. Southern Christian. Continue reading the DNA of Nigeria. Fast forward 2007, in the Eagle Square, drama happened. Some Peter was about to beat some Umaru, and uh, Nepa did what he did, and, uh, you know, handed over to Northern Muslim Umaru Aradua. God Almighty recalled him. Northerners, Muslims, stood for the swearing in handing over of Christian Southern Good Luck Jonathan, who asked for 2011 and was given. 2015, PDP for what it was, reneged and uh, you know tried to do bully its way and all that. Christian Southern leaders, including the, in the North, some in broad daylight destroyed their party cards for justice to be done. And a Muhammad Buhari Northern Muslim was elected. Now, eight years later, now, eight years later, this DNA of Nigeria, the fourth DNA of Nigeria, it regulates, that is political justice. That DNA regulates our body temperature. Without it, the fever will kill us. Our body will overheat and it will kill us. There is only one party properly configured to win 2023 presidential election, and that is Labour Party. That is the source of my confidence. So yes, I'm confident. Yes, I'm confident because it is logical and it is arithmetic. Put everything aside. 
This has to be done. We have to get it right. Nigeria belongs to all of us. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I would prefer to give it to you after. Yeah, I would give you. Good afternoon. My Hi. name is Timothy Wendy Zoom from the West of American News. Um, you rightly mentioned that uh, there are three. Sorry, three. sorry, sorry. The last question was so important. Please, before you ask yours. Uh, my friend, the lady, yes. I forgot a key part of your, your answer. Go back to 2019. The likes of Peter Obi, Wiki, Emmanuel Udom, and other Christian Southern politicians, if you recall, they had the resources, people, and experience to contest the presidency. But what did they do? And it was their constitutional right Hello, anyways. They had the constitutional right to contest in 2019. What happened? To show you that this DNA I'm speaking about is real, they restrained themselves. They also, show, they also showed respect to Nigerianness. They showed respect to others like me in 2019. As unprepared as I was, I knew 23 was not our turn and I could not wait for 31, and I was thirsty to rescue Nigeria from what we are witnessing today. I contested. Obi did not contest. It was his constitutional right, legal, and everything. They restrained themselves. This is respect for Nigerianness, for that DNA. What does it deserve? It deserves to be reciprocated. I was honored as an individual, as a politician in my own right, I enjoyed the respect we keep or be and others gave me as a Nigerian. And I was proud to be Nigerian. The more reason I'm proud to be a Nigerian today, serving as vice to Peter Obi, who has restrained himself there. Just to complete your, your answers. Timothy from Voice of America. Um, Peter Obi and yourself are riding a wave of settles the uh, well-known political orders, but I'd like to ask you, what is it about your candidacy that um, really resonates among the Nigerian people, especially the young people at this time in Nigeria? Good question. It is said that uh, self-praise is an act of ignorance, in my language roughly translated. But then in politics, if you don't do it, you stand to be the biggest loser. And I will fail to answer questions like the one you're asking me now. With all modesty, Nigerians have never had it so good in terms of people who have presented themselves to be elected as leaders. It is a fact of life. With due respect to others who have contested before now, Take Peter Obi, and also look at it in the context of who the others are. Again, with due respect, I'm not disparaging anybody. We don't do that at all. I'm not insulting anybody. Now, start with Peter Obi. This is a political leader who has lacked nothing. He has a name verified, confirmed behind him. All his schools that he attended, verified. The work he has done, verified. The businesses that he has done, legitimate, verified. The wealth that he has created, verified. After becoming so successful in business, he felt he wanted to make a mark in the life of his society and contested governorship. Typically, when he contested governorship, it was to go into PDP. He falls in that group 
income group, the rich, that would be in pain. He refused. He joined APCA. For three years was in court. Won, got in, uh, impeached, went to court and came back. He served for eight years, did not borrow a penny, left behind 75 billion naira, has not yet taken a penny from that state. Now, this is a record that all Nigerian governors are doing their best to bury because no governor is prepared to even attempt matching this record. So Nigerians are aware of Peter Obi. Even though Peter Obi can claim, turn by turn, it is their time, he says, do not elect him because of where he's from. Elect him because he's a Nigerian and he's competent. That's another point. Come to when he picked me as his vice. And then the absence of uh, controversies, local and international controversies, except those who just wish to lie unfairly. He's a very, very clean politician for what he has attained in life. He's a very clean politician and exactly what Nigeria desires. When one of the parties announced their running mate, the party, the party split in half, irrevocably. When the other party announced their vice, it split the country along lines. When Obi announced his own, Labour Party works stronger. And I got to work. <laughs> Nigerians are not sleeping. Um, I spoke about his school and all those. Look, the youth are, you know, uh, uh, seen everything. From the scratch, I built two universities. Where I come from, we're educationally challenged. I am the leader in promoting education in northern Nigeria with all modesty. <laughs> People and institutions compete with me to promote education in northern Nigeria. So you can see, you can begin to see it. And Peter Obi made it a point of duty to go for someone like me. I was in the reps, I was in the senate, yet to the best that I know so far, you have not had my name mentioned in any budget or any other kind of controversy. They were selling 360 houses of Apu. Only one member, I'm not saying the act was wrong, but I disagreed with the principle of and the source of repayment of those loans that, that they were taking. And I refused to buy the Apu house. Only one out of 360 refused to buy. <laughs> Nigerians are saying this. Um, I am all about promoting education. Uh, I have done it myself, two master's degrees, PhD. Uh, I'm willing and able to apply all that I know. I'm the promoter of what you call due process in Nigeria today. I brought it to Nigeria before they adopted it. The procurement system that I've been speaking about, I am the one with all modesty that has been behind it, unable to get government to do it the right way. When I get into government, together with a prudent person like Peter Obi, we will cut the waste and stop the stealing like we say. That is what Nigerians are seeing in us. Forget the fact that they are seeing in, in age, we are closer to the youth. Not just that, there is something associated with the age, not just the number. Something tangible that Nigerians can feel. He studied philosophy, and you see philosophy in everything he does in his business, in his politics, in his speeches. I mean, who would be derided in the way he was? That he's an Hollywood star. And he tells you, yeah, yeah, yeah. That reminds me, I will work with Nollywood. You have to be deep in knowledge, culture, and character. You need to be worth your weight in gold from where you come from to be such an individual. That is why Nigerians uh, are believing in us.
Well, um, your, your questions bring me to say more about this government that I'm trying to avoid. But, you know, the truth has to be said. Since 2015, was there anything ever done right? That's what you have to say. Nothing, nothing has been done right. I just mentioned in the opening paragraph, not a single promise fulfilled. Nothing was ever done right by these people. We are appealing to Nigerians. Countries, especially like Nigeria, are most vulnerable during transition periods. That's short transition period. That's the most vulnerable time for diverse countries like Nigeria. We have to work with citizens to hold this giant egg not to break. It's a very giant, fragile egg. We don't want it to break and spill on all of us. The sacrifice everyone has to make, that we are making, our citizens have to make the same. I still don't believe anybody will fall down and die. I pray not from hunger. You see, in our thinking, in our philosophy, that effort which you made in the most difficult circumstances yields you a greater result than the kind of sacrifice you make when you're in absolute comfort. Nigerians are in a lot of difficulty. We know we are even in greater difficulty than Nigerians. That I mean citizens what you think who cannot draw uh, cash from ATMs. There is nothing we can say besides the fact that, please, Nigeria, the darkest part of the night is just before dawn. Uh, the sun has gone. The sun is yet to rise. The sun has gone, so to say, on this era if this election works. And a very bright day is beckoning. Just bear out. We have days to go to the election and weeks, and we know we have to hit the ground running. But let me reiterate, these people have not done anything right. Nowhere in the world has a central bank ever been charged with fiscal responsibilities but we have seen it years before now. CBN doing agriculture, only for us to come and find out the CBN governor had presidential ambition. This is wrong. Where is the commander in chief? What was he doing? Go back in time. There were three culprits. One ran away from the country. One was imprisoned, so to say, or jailed. The other one, who is the CBN governor, remaining in his office, prospered. How come? How is that possible? And then to come and see that he became close to those who are close to Commander-in-Chief. Everything that could go wrong in Nigeria has gone wrong. So do not expect currency change to work out perfectly because they have never done anything. People cannot still collect their PVC cards. And I would say PVC is even more important than cash. Where is the government? Everything that is going wrong is going wrong. A little more perseverance and we'll get there. I'm really, really sorry that Nigerians are going through this. We are all in it. We are feeling it. Thank you. Some of our colleagues are going to 
ask a few more questions. I hope you can spare a few minutes. Yeah, yeah I will. And by the way, the constitutional rule of central, uh, the law of CBN does not have anything to do with elections. It is um, banker to the federal government, a lender of the last resort, um, financial, economic, and monetary, not fiscal. To deviate from that and say that Central Bank of Nigeria engaged in a certain change of currency for the sake of elections, this has never happened in history. At least I studied economics. I know, I, I think I can comfortably, it is completely wrong for CBN to do anything that is political or electoral because it is not their work. It is not the work of CBN to do anything electoral. They could not manage the um, value of the Naira. They saw Naira fall from 197 to 750. And they come to tell us that they are doing this for elections. Why did they not change the currency before 2019 elections? We're not going to, well, it's, uh, it's um, if they are trying to stop vote buying, in principle it is good. In principle. But how has it been implemented? CBN has nothing to do with elections. That's the answer. Mm. Yes. Yeah, we finish. We see your colleagues. Yes. Yeah. They, they need to ask uh, some, of the, some of the questions yes. of you. Mm. Um, and but you need to side, step aside yeah. so that they can actually do that on outside the stage. Yeah, that's the fun. quality of yeah. it. Yes. Last but not the least, I mean, on this currency issue, now that it hurts so much, uh, the governor of the state, which in uh, 2019 gave President Muhammadu Buhari 1.9 million votes, literally delivered Buhari to us. That governor has come out to say that Buhari's government has not achieved anything in eight years. And without uh, disparaging the governor again, I mean, the news is the news. This is a governor that was seen with a very, very despicable act, which Mr. President again turned his uh, head away and allowed it to happen. The president who claims to be fighting corruption. Now that same governor, because of Naira, has turned around to tell the whole world this president has achieved nothing in eight years after giving him one, after his state, giving him 1.9 million votes. If you ask me, not just this individual, not just the political party, but that entire system must never be trusted again to get anywhere close to power. Thank you so much. Can we give, uh, give me a round of applause?